This is a manifesto for the rights of access to colonial collections sequestered in Western Europe. Where are we now? Today, 26 years after the first edition of Dakar, the Biennale of Visual Arts in Senegal, and 26 years since Alpha Umar Konari, president of Mali and president of ICOM at the time, stated in 1992, I quote, it's about time that we questioned the fundamental basis of the situation and killed I repeat, killed the Western model of the museum in Africa in order for new methods for the conservation and promotion of our heritage to flourish, end of quote. Let's think back to the museums engineered by colonialism that Conaré was referring to. Think of it, 1863, the first museum of tropical Africa, founded by Louis Federbe in Saint Louis du Sénégal. 40, 50 years later, the museological structure set up by colonial Germany in Windhoek, Namibia. 1910, the initiatives of the British colonial administration in Nigeria and in Nairobi. And then, inevitably, the significance of post-independence institutions of the 1960s. And there I come to one particular one, the famous Musée Dynamique of Leopold Sédar Senghor, which I have recently renamed the Musée Dynamitique. And of course, since then, all the will and desire to travel for internationalism, for festivals and meetings, for international workshops, such as Triangle, or articulations such as Tinch, and the Laboratoire Agitar, Paix à son âme, and then the Biennale of Dakar, financed by the European Union and France, with no significant collections or museological generosity. So that today, at last, in 2018, somewhat slowly, the problematic is raised of those collections in Europe engendered by trade and pernicious colonialisms found in bulk in the ethno-colonial museums of West Europe. Intellectual and governmental plantations, notions of imperialist progress, the monoculture of anthropology, discursive closure, taxonomies and scientific racism, metabolisms covered in blood, transplant commercialism, colomentalities. Where are we now with this mass of what we call objects, objects in collections that are named ethnographic, object witnesses, as anthropologists once called them, objects from the markets and tribal art, these millions of art objects, because there's an inordinate quantity in Western Europe alone. All of them, without a name, without an author, without copyright, framed by ethnology and its lineage, which originates more often than not outside the source countries, identified by collecting, resales, and swapping between museums, a provenance at home in the salons, and to quote Jacques Chirac, secret gardens of patrons from Nelson Rockefeller to Marc Ladrette de la Charrière. All these thousands of objects in inaccessible depots under the Seine in Paris, where sleep, in the holdings of ships built for slavery, these muted bodies, these human remains with their fraudulently obtained consent, coercion and deception, secreted in the urban periphery, in the prison house of radical difference and negativity, to quote Simon Gikandi, confined because of their double or triple toxicity, carriers of microbiome capable of unleashing unexpected pandemics, or so we are told. Necropolitics of quarantined objects, hyper-restrictive access, a sequestering discourse, exerting control over future interpretations because Anything is possible if you omit the artist, the author, the producer, the name of the non-documented in order to replace it with ethnos. Where are we now? Restitution? Yes, please. Provenance research? Yes, please. Retrieve the biographies of objects acquired or stolen? Yes, please. And what about those object hunters and organ poachers of the other? Yes, please, but where, with whom, with what? 
Maybe reify a mission instead? Return to the source and raison d'etre of 19th century museum anthropology? Bring back the handmaidens of colonialism, the priests of ethnographic phantasmagoria, encourage their hermeneutic labor once more, restore the legitimacy of their discipline, just as they were about to go into retirement. Not sure? No thanks. That's when state magnanimity walks in, hand in hand with the universal museum of the 21st century. Now, go get a visa to visit your heritage in Paris, Berlin, London, or Vienna. Framed by a display, fashioned by interior design, exclusive and expulsive. A display that only adds a sentence or two. Because that's the point, isn't it? They didn't document much on these colonial collecting expeditions, did they? Instead it was, collect, collect, collect. Ah, the excoriation of the name of the engineer, the artist, the architect, and the bombs of World War II that destroyed the archives. The fire... Sorry. <laughs> The fires in the reserves, we know them all too well. What a relief for biographical analysis. What reassurance for the status of the masterpiece. So how to go beyond the colonial wound? Kill the museum, declared Alpha Conari. Hold on. We insist upon restitution, but not blindly at the pace of a snail. We won't wait for ethnological resuscitation and the organ trade to restore the ghost of the past. We won't wait for the discourse of provenance with its polite politics, step by step, piece by piece. We have to act now while restitution is underway and push for a re legislation between museums. I quote the Torpen Museum in Amsterdam. Museums about people. In chorus with other morgues, such as the British Museum, the Musée du Quai Branly, Jacques Chirac in Paris, the Humboldt Forum in Berlin, the Welt Museum in Vienna, the Tervuren Museum in Brussels. We need to push for legislation for rights of access to the histories of the worlds, to open up these bunkers and revise the collections while they are still in Europe. We need to radically rethink the condition of the museum today and let's address it by addressing the deepest of injuries where no redemption exists for the intermediary. Let's build a physical and intellectual site of remediation, construct an architecture for healing and reinterpreting these agent objects in today's worlds. Let's face this stubborn materiality which has been horrifically neglected Let's build incongruous and problematic assemblages and integrate digitalization, but hold on. Only if it follows a path that is both transdisciplinary and transcultural, that enters into the heart of physical collections, knowingly hidden or forgotten. Otherwise, who will select what is to be digitalized if not the priests of ethnology and the art market? And let's not forget to rethink the parameters of conservation that ideology of material survival, which is remarkably impenetrable. No more monocultures, no more intellectual plantations, no more museum mimicries, no more object hierarchies, no more aesthetic hegemonies, no more museological pyramids, that absent air conditioning, those inadequate conservators, etc., etc., take back control of the potential energy of these reservoirs of ingenuity, open museum universities. Let's change the ergonomics of museums, those organ accumulators of a consumerism, and build spaces for inquiry with rooms for conceptual intimacy and sites for trans-border art production. Based precisely on these anxious and contested collections, in order to welcome the new generation, the students, the researchers who are more diasporic than ever before with their future politics of communication, so that on the basis of meanings and social innovations derived from historical collections, we can rename those excluded authors and return copyright to their ancestors. You, students, artists, curators, writers, filmmakers, lawyers, architects, ecologists, brothers, and sisters, there's no time to lose. Thank you. <laughs>